Hey guys, welcome to a brand new episode of Harry Potter Wizards Unite. Today we are talking about the second brilliant event for this month. Potter's Calamity Brilliant Event will be starting 11 hours 22 minutes from this time. By the time I release the video, which will probably be about 1 o'clock, you're looking at about 6 hours until it is released. So we'll be going through just heads up on some of the tasks that you'll be encountering. So to give you a little bit of preparation. So you, some of these you will be prepared, be able to prepare for. So you'll get through them quicker. Just some general tips for the event and also where you can find all the different foundables. So to start off, let's look at the brilliant event challenges that you'll have to complete. Like the usual format, we have four in total with three tasks in each individual segment. So the first one is one that you can prepare for early on before you actually go into the event. So we have return five foundables by only family. That's going to be easy. Nice, easy two books. Dine at two ends. Two ends. I mean, you're probably going to need a couple of tips to complete that one. It's obviously going to be very easy. Unlocking one port key portmanteau. That could prove difficult if you, like me, are in a situation where currently you know, I probably am going to walk off my final port key by the end of the event. Now, what I want to try and do is hold that 5K until it gets like 4.9 and then do no more walking. At that point, when I open the app, I will walk you know, 100 meters and therefore trigger it. And that will count towards my unlocking of a port key, portmanteau. Now, the second tasks we have are retrieve two brilliant golden snitches. Uh, so that should be pretty easy considering this golden snitch is the only foundable that we will encounter, we'll encounter in the wild. We have brew four potions. Heads up on that one. Brew doesn't mean you have to go through the whole, you know, actually click on four different potions and it has to go through the time limit for it to brew. You can just collect four potions. So if I was to go to my potions now, I've got two cauldrons running by the event. By the time the event starts, if I make that a healing potion, then by the time it starts, I'm going to have plenty of potions to collect and I'll complete that easy. The other two tasks, obviously with the brilliant event, brilliant golden snitch is easy. 10 masterful casts shouldn't be too hard, but if you struggle with that, you really just want to be looking for those easy casts. Golden snitch or will probably be Meteorology Jinx Recanto. So that's why I don't think that should be too hard to complete. Potter's Calamity number three, you'll be looking for um, four high threat foundables. So I believe the Golden Snitch, the Golden Snitch on uh, it just found in the wild is a high threat foundable. So it will probably be a high threat foundable during the brilliant event as well. So again, that shouldn't be too hard and you'll complete that at the same rate, recovering three brilliant Golden Snitches. Returning four Dark Arts foundables, you probably just want to go into you know town center. So if my area, if I go into where all the shops are, there is a um, dark arts nest, and in another village it's the same. So just try and go find somewhere that is populated with shops in your local area. And then finally, so you can see we can get through these pretty quickly, probably in in 24 hours easy. Uh, then we have unlock five port key portmanteaus. I think it was th three the first time, four the last um, quest, and then this one's five. So that should be obviously once you've hatched your first, say hatched, like still Pokemon Go talk. Once you have unlocked your portmanteau and you've used your port keys, that point you want to be trying to get two Ks probably, but you're probably going to end up with more more seven Ks. Just start walking them and you'll complete that in no time. Return 10 Ministry of Magic foundables. So that might be slightly harder. So the Ministry of Magic is usually found near offices. So you want to look for an office building, town hall, courthouse, ministry government building, and that is where you'll find a flag. You can obviously just go around your, you know, where there's no flags and you'll probably encounter a Ministry of Magic. So I can probably load up and Damn it, it's no Ministry of Magic, but it shouldn't be too hard to complete. And then finally, you can finish off with completing three wizard challenges. Now, you're probably going to want to use some of your brilliant rune stones at the fortresses. These will award you one of the items. So let's get into what the items will be in this event. 
to somehow I have Hogwarts paper soon. So, but, but the brilliant snitch, there we go, just clarifies that it's an unfoundable, it'll be the brilliant snitch, uh, and the threat severity is high. So making, I think, one of those quests we've just looked at very easy to complete. The next we have the framed photo that will be of Harry Potter's family, and that will be given to you once you've completed all the quests. Now the DMLE badge can be found completing the second part of the four per set of tasks. The London Five photograph that we can see at the very bottom, that will be given to you before completing the third of the four task sets. Ministry ID of Harry Potter, that will be found through walking those 7K brilliant eggs. Usually you need three fragments. I, you, if, one of the kind of things about this event is going to be different is we knew, now have 7K eggs will give a lot of more, lot more experience in your 2Ks and your 5Ks. Therefore, it might be worth using those porkies for them if you're willing to spend a bit, but if not, I would probably save them. I'm undecided what I'll do. I'll see what I get from my first seven, few 7Ks and then decide whether or not I'm going to use any of my keys on them, being that they're a pretty hard currency to come by. Now, the final one is the Hogwarts Heroes for the Ministry. That will be given to you for completing Wizarding Challenges, so you will use a brilliant runestone, and with that, you will have a chance at a drop of one of the fragments. Now, if you have some leftover from last time, these will be effective. So you can use, I've got 24 runestones there, which I'll be able to use um, within that quest to get those new fragments. But if you've only got a few, you might want to save some of those for the very end. You're probably gonna acquire enough by the end anyway. You can see how this could actually realistically be done in the first 24 hours. If you time everything up, I mean, all you really have to do is, is go out probably for two hours, and in that time, just keep your 7K eggs lined up, and you can complete this event. So I'm not gonna risk this one as much as I usually do because last time I finished and then I had nothing to do <laughs> related to the event. And I think I'm just gonna, I say that, but then I kinda want the green books because these green books will give you an advantage in fortresses. If you take your enemies down quicker, then you can take on those higher levels. And I'm working out, by the way, whether the, the drop rate of the fragments is higher. So I've done 50 tasks, uh, 50 wizarding challenges at level one and now I'm on my way to doing 50 challenges at level six, so tower chamber number one, I think. Um, and I'm gonna compare those results. 50 should give us a pretty good sample size. And from that, I hope to be able to show you guys whether it is actually worth taking down higher fortresses to get those fragments. Okay, well, that's all for this one. Hopefully, you guys have enjoyed it and found it helpful. If you have, please hit the like button and hit subscribe if you want to keep up to date with future content and information. That's all from me. See you guys soon.